Hi guys, Billy back and this time we're going to be looking at the ZD Toys Iron Man Mark 1 1 tenth scale figure. I've been really looking forward to this one because it's actually the final one from the Hall of Armor set. So this is going to complete my Hall of Armor. So I'm super excited to finally get this guy. As you can see, it comes in a very similar packaging to all the others. The front of the box opens out from the middle and you can see there's a picture of the figure itself. Another picture of the figure, Iron Man Mark I. There's this lovely sort of metallic, sort of dark, dirty iron color to the box. It's really shiny, it's, it's very, very nice. I will say that the arc reactor isn't showing up very well. It looks, well, it looks turned off, to be honest. So I don't know what that's about, very interesting. Disney logo in the corner, because this is an officially licensed product. However, it's not sold here in the West. It's actually an Asian market exclusive, so you have to get it from overseas, but um, I got mine from AliExpress, it got shipped over pretty quick. And there's a new logo up in the top right hand corner called Infinite Action X, just up here. I don't know what that's about. It's never, never seen that on any of the other figures. Let's have a look at a Mark 42 box in comparison. You can see, yeah, it doesn't have the uh, Infinite Action X logo anywhere on it. So uh, yeah, this will be interesting to find out why it's got Infinite Action X written on it. And then on the side, we can see it's got the Iron Man 1 logo and a picture of the figure. Then on the back, we've got some more promo shots, some lovely Chinese writing here that says, this should finally finish off Bill's collection. Don't know why they felt the need to mention me on the back, but it is appreciated ZD Toys, thank you very much. And we've got the ZD Toys logo down in the bottom and just a whole bunch of warnings and a barcode. Don't know why you'd be interested in a barcode. It's, it's a barcode. And then on the other side, we've got the Mark One, and it looks like he's firing out flame effects, which looks pretty cool. And hopefully that's foreshadowing for what's actually inside the box. Nothing up the top, nothing at the bottom. Okay, let's get the plastic off and actually open up the box. Okay, just coming in, we'll open up the flaps. And inside we can see we've got a picture of the Iron Man Mark One, but again, the arc reactor's missing, very interesting. I'm not sure what that's about, but uh, yeah, still pretty cool, let's see. Yeah, on the back we still have the instructions for the stand, and then inside we have the figure. Once we take that out, we have all the accessories, including a little piece of the back part of the figure itself, some flame effects, and the stand. And that's about it. Okay, let's get him out of the packaging and have a look at exactly what the figure looks like. Okay, and here he is straight out of the box and we can see that the actual figure looks pretty nice. I've noticed there is a slight loose joint in the hip here already. It's not massively bad, because again, once you plonk him on the shelf, it stands up pretty confidently on his own, but it is something I have noticed, but something that is super impressive is the paint app on the figure itself. This is this is really, really nice for one tenth scale. There's different layers in the actual paint app itself. We can see that it's actually got like a sort of burnt iron effect on the outside and then you've got some small normal sort of iron sort of silver chipping away here. They've actually done some scratches and some blemishes and the plating is imperfect as it would be. Looks like someone's beat it with a hammer. Very, very textured. He's even got all the details in the legs, including the uh, tank rails just on the side here. He's got little doodads on the back of his calves. The plating on the back here, it looks like it's had paint chipping and weathering gone on through it. Again, this back bit here has a plate bit that goes on. You can see they've even painted on this stuff and he's even got the Stark logo on the back. Got that little gas canister sort of just on his forearm there. And you can see the plating covers his hands pretty well. But they've also added paint into the hands so you can actually see the brown gloves underneath. And my only mild criticism is the fact that this helmet, it doesn't really, the, most of these um, ZD Toys figures normally have lenses in here. But this one doesn't have lenses in for some strange reason. I don't know why, it's very strange. It just looks silver and metal. You might want to actually paint a little bit of white in there. I know it's supposed to be darker and he's not supposed to have sort of as much of a light up feature, but still. We can see underneath they've actually painted in or sculpted in some of the cloth and painted it brown to 
make it look like he's actually wearing a sort of corduroy sort of jumpery top underneath as well. And then it comes with this back plate bit, which is in actual fact, all the really cool details for the back part of the figure itself. Looks like it goes in this way. Got to line them all up properly. There we go. And he's got all the details in the back of the suit there we can see that this has got sort of sort of the, the servers and stuff inside it i don't know i don't know engineering i don't know the words for everything it's a little doodads it's got doodads all over the back of him yeah and then we can see he's actually got an arc reactor lens in there but there's no light up feature which is a bit of a shame would have liked a bit more of a light up feature he's pretty impressive for a one temp scale figure at his price point to be honest it looks like they actually uh took their time with this one and had some fun putting this all together because not only do you get a really nice sort of paint application on this guy he's got some new accessories finally remember I was saying with every single one of these releases in the uh, one to seven range so far they've all come with the same fire effects well this time we get new ones and these are the flamethrower effects that go on the bottom half of his forearms I think these fit in specifically this is a left one there we go and this is the right one getting them on there yeah and here he is with the flame effects attached and definitely the articulation is lacking in this one it is a big bulky figure and even hot toys struggle to get any sort of posing with this suit because it is so hard however a little bit of engineering would have allowed you to be able to bend these forearms a little more because these just are on a single joint and there's not a lot of movement in there. But if there was a double joint, you could actually put in a little bit more of a flex. I wasn't expecting miracles at this price point. And as you can see, the backpack's just falling off. So give me a minute, I'll fix that. Okay, the backpack's back on. But yeah, a little bit of engineering would have really helped to uh, get this guy up another level. However, he is at a very low price point. So I wasn't expecting miracles. However, I was hoping for a moderately okay posable figure with a really nice paint app and that's exactly what i got with this guy the details considering his size are fantastic and just like all the other figures in the zd toys marks one to seven range his paint application just exceeds what you would expect at this price point it is absolutely fantastic with details you would not expect to see in a Marvel Legend, but this is actually competitively priced with that line. Now, one of the things I did notice when I was actually messing about with this guy a little bit more is just underneath his uh, calf here, you can see there's details inside with the gas canisters and the rotor pieces just inside here. They didn't have to put that in. All they had to do was put a plate there. You wouldn't have even noticed it, but... Uh, They've actually put it in and I'm super impressed by that. It looks really good. However, the single joints in the knees and the arms do let it down a little bit. But coming in, we can see he's actually got quite a bit of head turn left and right. Not much up, not much down, as you would expect with this suit. The shoulders go down, all the way down to his side. However, bringing them up, it gets a little tight inside the armor here and it starts to stop and rub on the shoulder single jointed arms which are very very limited which is a bit disappointing and there's no movement in the hands because they're hidden by this giant plates on the forearms same again for this side it comes up to about there single jointed arms and again the hands are blocked off by those plates torso wise there's absolutely no movement whatsoever the only movement you're going to get is down in the hips there is a drop down hip here so it can come down so you can get the legs out a little bit more and there is plenty of movement actually the legs can go really really far up you know when something's like so articulated in one place and not in another it just feels a little bit ridiculous that's what you get with this guy look at the articulation now i mean this guy can just put a door through Wah! and the legs can go out to about there but again i'm getting a little bit of a difficult flex in there there is a single joint in the knee and there isn't a lot of ankle articulation because the plating blocks it off. However, unlike the previous releases in the line, he does not have pop-out joints at the arms here, 
which would have been nice actually because you could have been able to pop these out and move them around a little bit more and that would have given you just a little bit more articulation but as it is it doesn't really matter these hands can go all the way around like this articulation wise this guy isn't going to blow you away however i do like the fact that i've been able to put a lot of articulation in the legs he's going to be very expressive from the waist down the upper body though not as much i would have liked him to have pop out joints in the shoulders here because then you could at least get the arms moving around a little bit more and he also comes with the stand that all these figures come with as you can see it's got the iron man mark one logo on there with marvel studios it's got the same sort of poseable arm forward back left and right it's got a pivot up here he's got these uh, grippers here which you can actually take off and you can actually attach them to the uh, crotch grabber and you can use this to get him into various flight poses and whatnot however this isn't a figure you probably want to put in a flight pose it's reasonably heavy for the size but also at the same time it's not one of those you know figures you want flying in the air this is one that you really want sort of very grounded because he is very rustic but it's still there if you want to stabilize him on your shelf let's be honest one truck drives past my house and half my figures decide they want to do a swan dive straight off just like Tom Daly. So it's always handy to have a stand where possible. And here he is next to the rest of the figures in the Marks 1 to 7 lineup. The Hall of Armour is now complete and super happy. And honestly, I'm just glad they finished the line. Marks 1 to 7 was really what I was gunning for and that's exactly what they delivered. And I have to say, the Mark 1 is exactly what I expected it to be. A very nicely painted figure with mediocre articulation it's very hard to get something as bulky as the mark one to be articulated but i'm glad they actually managed to find a semi-okay middle ground so you can get some poses out of him but also have it look really really nice and i'm just really glad that they've given us some different accessories with the mark one so that we can pose him with very specific fire effects for that specific suit and just in case this bright light is washing everything out, let's just turn it off quickly. And we can see, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty nice lineup if you ask me. The paint applications are fantastic across the board. I've put my Battle Damage one in here at the moment because the normal Mark III that I've got is actually on charge because I wanted to charge up the light out feature. And I believe the Mark IV is actually coming out with a light out feature very, very soon. So looking forward to that one. Okay, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. If you do me a favor now, if you can get the fuck out of my cave, I'm going to put this guy in the Hall of Armor and complete the set. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye bye.